Hello there, and welcome back to another episode of our Lumina Neo Academy, the show where we help you to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors, and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So you make sure that you stay until the end. Also, if you don't own Luminar Neo or the HDR Merge plugin, get our discount code to get the best possible price and you can find it in the description of this video. Finally, I would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In today's video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create HDR image from one single photo by using HDR Merge plugin in Luminar Neo. Now I'm going to show you how to create the image and how to edit it. However, before we're going to do that, let's talk about a few tips on how to get the most out of your photo. First of all, ideally, you're going to have a high quality RAW file. TIFF file would do as well, but once you start to play around with JPEGs, you really don't get the most out of your work. After that, another tip is when you're capturing the image, when you're taking the photo, make sure that you at least 0.3 stop under exposed. This way, you're going to make sure that you have the details on your sky, as well as some of the brighter areas of your image. Now, when we're talking about single image HDR, it's something that the Skylum first introduced for the Aurora HDR. Using the fact that some of the recent cameras are really powerful and they can capture quite big dynamic range, they are now able to help and produce HDR-like image from just one single photo. Now, what are some of the photography styles that can benefit with the single image HDR? Of course that you can always try it on your portrait image. However, sometimes the artifacts are not too nice. What it really works very well is on landscape photography in overall. Little less contrasty sunset and sunrise works very well, as well as early blue hour. In overall landscape, it works well on this style. However, when it comes to interior design and really extreme light condition captures, that's when the one single image will not be enough and it will not give you the dynamic range you will be looking for. So now we have this out of the way and we can jump into Luminar Neo and start with the edit. So as you can see, we are already in Luminar Neo and we are starting in a catalog module. As always, we're starting by looking at our sample file. And don't forget that if you want to follow me along and do the edit on your own computer, you can just jump into the description of the video and download the file from there. We have it already available here. It's a DNG raw file, which follow the steps I mentioned a little earlier. For example, like the underexposure of 0.3 stop. Now, at the same time, we also need our HDR merge plugin. Now, if you want to learn more about HDR Merge plugin, we have a full tutorial on that already available on our channel, and it will teach you everything you need to know about this tool, on what is it about, how to install it, and how to use it. I will put the link in the top right corner of your screen, so we can continue now. Now, we have the image here, and all we need to do is to drag and drop it onto our tool. As you can see, when I hover over, we get this blue frame, and then when I release the mouse, it appears on our list. Now, once you have it on the plugin, there is nothing else you need to do. Because when you click on the little option here, you can see that with a single image, there are no options available here. So we can just click away. And all we need to do is just to click on Merge. When it comes to time, it very much depends on the size of your image. And it can be anything between few seconds to few minutes. Once the HDR image is created, it by default drop into the HDR merge folder, which you can find in your main folder list. So from here, we're just gonna drag and drop it back to our sample file folder, which is right here. So now we can click there and we have the image here ready for editing. Once you have it here, you just click on it to select it and let's move it into our edit module by clicking on the edit on the top of the screen or using E on our keyboard. As always, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to develop the image. So for this, we're going to move into our main toolbar and click on the develop tool to open it. 
For the moment, let's close the light section and move directly into the optics. In the optics, we want to click on Auto Death Range and just double check visually the image if we need to do some additional distortion adjustments. The image looks quite good, so there is nothing else to do here. So we can close the optics and move to the sharpness and noise reduction. So for this, let's open the sharpness and noise reduction sections and let's zoom into 100%. For this, we can just go to the bottom of our screen, click on a zoom shortcut and click on the 100%. Now use your mouse to navigate towards the area where there is lots of texture and also some darker parts where the noise is the most visible. Now there is a fair bit of noise, so let's start with luminosity on somewhere around 20 and double check if that is enough. I think the 20, maybe 25 will give us a good result. And once we finish with this, we can move towards the sharpening. Now for this picture, we can use our formula of 100 and it's really simple. You just take the number 100 and minus it with the value you have added to the luminosity. So 100 minus 25 is 75. And that's the amount we're going to enter into our sharpened slider. So let's bring it to 75. That usually works very well together to make sure that we're not making the image softer with our luminosity and we're not over sharpening it with our sharpened slider. The final thing we need to do here, we need to do a little bit of masking as when we increase the sharpening slider, we sharpening the entire image. What we want to do, we just want to sharpen the areas where there is texture, edges and details. So move to the masking slider and just increase it to somewhere between 60 and 70. Once you finish with this, we can close the noise reduction and sharpness and we can just zoom out. Now let's continue by going into our light and black and white section. Starting with the highlights, let's bring the highlights down and keep an eye on the image, for example, the clouds to see how far we want to go. So I think somewhere around minus 80 is giving us a nice result. Now with the shadow and specifically for the HDR images, you don't want to go crazy. You don't want to go all the way because you will just lose all the contrast. So let's just go very gently, keep an eye on the darker areas of your image to see that we can see the details there. And once you're happy, we are done with this. So now we can move towards the blacks and whites. To adjust the blacks and whites, you want to hit J on your keyboard to make sure that we can see the clipping mask for your highlights and shadows. Now, anytime you see this blue overlay that is giving us a suggestion that these areas are really dark, almost black, and they are clipped. So we know that with our blacks, we can't really go too far because we're going to be adding more and more of these blue areas. So let's just bring it back up and with the blacks, it doesn't really matter that there is a little bit of these blue areas, but you don't want to go crazy. So I think somewhere around 10 or minus 10 will work well. Now with the whites, when you go crazy, you will get the red overlay. Now you can't see it here. Let's see if we can get it up. Now when you see this red overlay, those areas are completely overexposed white and they lost all the details. So you don't want to do that. Let's just reset it. We were somewhere around 80. And we were more gentle somewhere around 20 here. So we bring our whites back. And what we're looking for is a nice balance histogram, a nice balance image. So I think something like this, maybe 20 or maybe 30 will work very well. Once we finish, we can close the blacks and whites and come back to exposure and smart contrast. Maybe we want to add a little bit of contrast by using the smart contrast slider. And with the exposure, I quite like what I see. If anything, we can bring it down a little bit because the HDR effect makes everything a little brighter. So I think somewhere around 0 0.14 minus 0 0.14 will do very well. Once we finish with the light, we can also close it and we're going to finish the development in the color section. In the color section, because it's a TIFF file, we don't have an option to use one of the presets, but we can use the sliders and do it manually. So because it was nice dramatic sunset, we want to add a little bit of temperature by using the temperature slider. So maybe make it a little warmer. And we also want to add a little bit of magenta on our tint slider to make it even more cinematic. Once we finish with this, we can hit J on our keyboard to remove the clipping mask and we can continue. Now, and overall, I think the image is a little bit oversaturated. So I would actually bring the saturation down to someone around minus 10 and counterpart it with a vibrant slider just to bring some of the lower tones up. So I think somewhere around 10. Now that's it for the develop tool. 
we can now close the color section, we can close the tool and apply it to the image. Now it's important to remember that if you want to do any further adjustments to it, you can always move to edits panel where you have all the tools you used earlier and you can make any further adjustments you want here. Once you're happy, you can come back to the tools and we're going to continue here. When I edit HDR file, after I do my development, I always go straight into the structure AI. In a structure AI, I want to bring the amount down to somewhere around minus 20. I think that when you do that, you get a little bit of more natural feel back. You will remove these really harsh details and make it all a little bit more natural. So once we finish with the structure AI, we can close it and move on. Now looking at the image, I can see some of the sensor dust. So for this, we're going to go into our erase tool and use the remove dust spots option. So you just click on it and give it a moment for the application to remove these spots for us. Once it's finished, it will give us the message of dust spots removed and we can move on from here. Now, while you're here, you can also do some additional removal. You could, for example, remove some of these dirt on the street. So you just adjust the size of your brush. So let's say somewhere around 10, you just click here, select another one, and maybe this one right here. You can still adjust your brush by using your keyboard as well, or you can also zoom in by using Command or Control Plus. Then we can select this here and continue if we want. We can also select this here. And once we're done with the selecting, we can zoom back up and just click on Erase. The application will take a moment, it will erase these parts, and then we can continue with the edit. So again, once we're happy, we just close this tool and continue. Now, when I do the edit, it's always good to double check what will Enhance AI do. So open the Enhance AI and see if the Accent AI will help a little. And it does a little bit, but we don't want to overdo it as it does bring some of the HDR feel back to the image. The second slider, the Sky Enhancer, usually works quite nicely too. You don't want to go crazy on it, but maybe somewhere around 15 works quite nice. Again, once we're happy and finish with the tool, we can close it to apply it and we can continue. But before we're going to do that, let's do a little bit of cropping. For this, we're going to use our crop AI and maybe for the crop, let's use one of the presets. So for example, we can go for the four to five. Once we're happy, we can then navigate it around the image and see what we like. I think something like this is looking very good. And then we just click on apply. It takes a moment, crop it for us, and then we can continue. While we're still in the Essentials tools, we can continue and maybe check the Landscape tool and add a little bit more of the Golden Hour. We can do that by using the Golden Hour slider. And let's just keep an eye on the image and see what you like the most. Once you're happy, close it to apply it. And to finish it off, we can add a little bit of Vignette. So open the Vignette tool and bring the Amount slider down until you can start to notice the Vignette and like the result. Now a quick tip when you're adjusting your vignette, it's a good practice to take a little step back from your screen because the vignette is more visible when you're a little further away. So that's something to try and see to make sure that you don't add too strong vignette. Once we're happy with it, again, close the tool, apply to the image, and we're going to do just very gentle edit. So for this, we're going to jump into our creative tools and maybe use the mystical tool here. Let's just increase the amount to add a little bit of nice glow. And to finish it off, we can close it, apply it, and quickly move into our professional tools all the way at the bottom of our main toolbar. Open the super contrast tool and adjust the contrast individually for highlights, midtones, and shadows. Now with the highlights, let's just see what we like. We want to be quite gentle here. With the midtones, again, similarly, it does quite nice job for our sky. And finally, for the shadows, let's see. We don't want to overdo it. So I think just something very gentle somewhere around nine. Now looking at it, I think it's looking all good. The final touch I would do is to close the image from the bottom to add more attention towards the cathedral. So to do this, we can use multiple different tools. However, since we have the dodge and burn tool now, let's use that. So we are still in the professional section of our main toolbar. Click on the last tool here, the dodge and burn, and make sure that your brush is on darken. Now adjust the size. We want a really big brush and just make one brush at the bottom. Now, when you wait a moment, you will see that the darker part appears. And after that, you can come to your amount slider and just adjust it to see how much of it you want to apply to your image. So I think for me, somewhere around 80 or maybe 70 is looking quite good. 
When I work with the dodge and burn tool, I like to use the before and after just to see the adjustment. Maybe it's still a little bit too strong. So I think somewhere around 60 is looking good. So there you have it. This is how you create HDR file from one single photo using the HDR merge plugin in Luminar Neo. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cloudphotographer.com slash luminargift. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Borst and I can't wait to see you in the next video.